Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another express running session. So in today's little talk I wanted to discuss the Great Western Railway or the GWR and I'm sure lots of you will have heard of the Great Western, it's in Thomas and Friends, I talk about it a lot, it's all over the place really, but what is the Great Western? Maybe some of you folks might not know what it is. So the Great Western is a company, it's just the name of a company or a brand, just like Hornby is the name of a company, right? But unlike Hornby who produced model trains for us to buy, the Great Western produced and built real engines and they also operated them and they did all of the other things that uh, a railway company in real life has to do. The Great Western was also a really, really long surviving company. It was around for a very, very long time. It was founded, in fact, nearly 200 years ago, not that far off 200 years ago, in 1833. Now, that's not 1933, we're talking 1800s here, which is a very, very long time ago. And the company survived for 115 years, and they didn't close their doors until 1948. And basically what happened in 1948 is that all of their engines, all of their track, all of their rolling stock, everything Great Western was mixed into a much bigger company known as British Railways. And that might be another video for a different day. But yeah, the Great Western, it was a company, they produced engines and obviously they're in the Western region of the UK, which sort of makes sense. So I've done loads of videos on engines of the Great Western, especially the tender engines. And if you want to see one of those, I'll put a video up there. Well, a link so you can click on it. But what a couple of people have noticed is that I've never done a Great Western tank engine video, which I think is a bit of a shame. So that's what we're going to do today. I've picked seven, uh, no, I think it's eight in fact, tank engines from the Great Western, and I'm going to run them all today for you. So that's it. That's the learning part over. Now let's get some trains running, and I hope you enjoy it. So I'm going to start with a really lovely engine that you might not have seen before if you've come from Thomas and Friends. So here we have quite a lovely Great Western tank engine here known as the Small Prairie. And there's also such a thing as the Large Prairie, and if you stay tuned I will show you that later on. So as you can see, or as you might be able to see, this loco does not say Great Western on the sides of the tank. It's got that strange little logo on the side, and that is actually the British Railways logo. And if you remember what I said earlier on, British Railways is the company that was formed after the Great Western was no more. However, this loco, this engine, this train dates back to the Great Western days. So when it was first built, it would have said Great Western on the side of the tank. However, even though it doesn't say Great Western on it anymore, you can still sort of tell that it's a Great Western design. Once you've seen a lot of Great Western tank engines, you will grow to recognize them. One very, very easy way to recognize them though is the color because most Great Western engines were green. And I think if you think back to Thomas and Friends, you might be able to think of a few green Great Western engines as well. So yes, there we go, the small prairie. And she has got some passenger coaches, as you can see. And at the back of the train there, she's got a Great Western siphon wagon, which does say GW on the side, which stands for Great Western, of course. So let me know in the poll, what do you think that might have been for? Let's see if anyone can guess it. All right, for now though, let's get the small prairie started with her lovely little train. Nice steady start. And we'll get it to a nice speed like that. There we go. Very lovely. So next up we have two very friendly engines that you might only just have been thinking about. So these are from Thomas and Friends. You can see they do say Great Western on their sides. We have Oliver at the front there and Duck just behind him. And as you can see, they're pulling the train together, which is called double heading. And speaking of their train, you can see we've got quite a long goods train. You can have long goods trains once you've got more than one engine, because of course there's a lot more power there. And at the back, we've got a character that you might not recognize from this angle, but if I show you his face, there we go, you can see that it is of course Toad. And where would good old Oliver be if he didn't have his Toad with him? So let's get these started then. And I'm sure you know all about these folks, so I'm not gonna tell you too much about them myself. Come on, let's go. <laughs> there we go. And I'm sure they're going to enjoy working with each other today. So that is fine. And there goes Toad. Keep it up, Toad. Good work. So if you've already seen very many of my videos, you will certainly know this already, but the engines from Thomas and Friends in most cases are based on real engines in real life. 
So we've just seen Oliver and Duck, and now we're seeing the engines that they were based on. So at the front, we have Oliver's basis, known as the 14XX, or the 1400 class, and you can tell very clearly that that is definitely Oliver. And then behind it there, we have, once again, a Great Western Pannier tank. There we go, that's what they're called. It does have a classification, but I forget which it is now, so you'll have to let me know in the comments if you know. But as you can see, yes, it looks a lot like Duck. And between them, they're also hauling a freight train, but a very slightly different freight train uh, with box van as you can see there. So with that, let's get these two started as well then, shall we? Okay. Give it a click, and there it goes. So there goes the small prairie. I do love that thing. She is lovely, isn't she? And then, of course, Oliver and his friend Duck who are green as well, as you will notice, but a slightly different green to what the Great Western always used to use. Let's wait for Toad, shall we? Hello, Toad. Nice to see you. Oh, there we go. A couple more engines coming out of the tunnel there. That looks pretty cool. Cool, that tall box van was close to the roof, though. Yes, so there you have it, the first three trains of the day, and I hope you like them. So decide for yourself which one has been your favourite so far, and let me know down in the comments, and I'll see if I can't bring you a new favourite in the second half. So let's get some of these taken off, and I will set up some more lovely Great Western tank engines for you. All right. All right then, we are back. So earlier on I mentioned the small prairie and I showed it to you and I promised you that the large prairie would be on the way. And this is it just here and yes, you can see that it is quite a lot larger, although of course it's still a prairie. It's got the same number of wheels of course. Now because it's so much larger, it's also heavier and stronger so it can pull more coaches. So as you can see here, yep, we've got even more coaches than last time that the previous prairie was pulling. So we have six coaches there and because of her size, she should be able to manage manage those just fine. So let's get her started then and see this one run. Oh yes, and she's quite a speedy one too. I think we've got an express passenger train on our hands here. So the large prairie is pretty large. Yes, that's true. But don't think for one second that it is the largest tank engine that the Great Western had. Oh no. Get a load of this one. You won't believe this. So this is a big tank engine. This is known as the 72XX, and I'm pretty sure it was the Great Western's largest ever tank engine, or the longest at any rate. So yeah, just look at the size of that. Look at the number of wheels. How many wheels is that? That is, yeah, that is quite something. So she is such a big heavy engine that she is easily able to pull pretty long trains. So if we take a look up there, you can see just how many ocean wagons she's got there. There's about as many wagons there that Oliver and Duck were hauling earlier but of course there was two of them only one of the 72 xx but she is strong enough i'm sure to manage it so let's give that a try she's quite a slow engine this one doesn't like to go fast but that's okay if it wants to run slow that's fine by me we'll let it do whatever it wants but as you can see it is hauling the ocean wagons there without any problems which is exactly what you want so last but certainly not least then, we have a very medium sized tank engine. This one is known as the 5600 class or the 56XX. And this one's pretty ordinary, I would say. It's not particularly gigantic or very, very tiny. I suppose the wheel configuration is quite strange because as you can see, there's no undriven wheels at the front. We have them at the back on this one, which makes it look a bit like a backwards engine, which is strange. But apart from that, yes, quite a lovely, uh, oddly chunky design, this one. As you can see, this one has got some Cornish Riviera coaches, which are some of my favourite coaches. I really like those. So, yep, I'm sure she's going to enjoy hauling those. With that then, let's get this beauty running, shall we? And we will have a good run with this final three engines. Uh, all of these are quite a bit bigger, though, than the first lot, which I'm sure you noticed. All right, very nice. Oh, and there we have the large prairie as well. Doing very well with her express passengers. Very nice. So this large prairie is quite an old one by Hornby, but it's probably the fastest and most powerful tank engine I've got. It's pretty awesome. 
and let's just watch these wagons go by on the 72XX. That is quite a lot of wagons, although it's not all of my ocean wagons, although I bet you would manage to pull them. Hmm, got a bit of a bonus on that train as well, that's naughty. Get off, Bullman, naughty. So that is more or less most of my Great Western tank engines, so give them a round of applause if that's something you feel you want to do. And uh, let me know, of course, in the comments which your favourite one of all was. It's very difficult. I might say the Small Prairie was my favourite, but I do like them all, I have to say. Very, very lovely, aren't they? Oh yes, look at her go. She does slow down a little bit, though, on Gordon's Hill, I've noticed but not a problem. All right then, folks. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. And if there's anything else you'd particularly like to learn about in one of these videos, let me know down in the comments and I'll see what I can do. For the time being, though, if you want to learn more about steam locos and how they work, steam trains, uh, check the link that's going to appear right now. For the time being, though, that is Great Western Tank Engines. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you all very, very soon. All right. Cheers, everybody. Take care.